bring down my mic. Hello. So I got a new camera and I'm still kind of working things out. It's a really, really nice camera. I'm really excited about it. But I think I've still got to like work out a few kinks because my uh, video doesn't look super great. It looks pretty okay. But um, I think I'm going to be doing a big redesign of my my office. Yeah, so you can see on right here. There it is, right behind my hand. There's a little bit of my green screen showing up there. So I'm going to do a big redesign of my office. I think I'm going to get a new green screen that's like a, like a, you know, those pull down maps that they had in school. I'm going to get something like that. Hopefully we'll be able to light um, easier and stuff like that. So with com combined with this new camera, I think that my live streams are going to look really awesome. Uh, okay, so we're going to answer this question and it's going to be fun. So, uh, oh, Ben just asked what kind of camera. This is the Sony Alpha um, A, or yeah, the Sony A6400. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty sweet, kind of expensive, <laughs> but I do this a lot. Oh, it wasn't that expensive. I got a good deal. Um, oh, I, I actually bought it with just the body without a lens, and then I bought a lens that was also quite expensive. <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah, so I'm going to answer this question. React Effect creates a uh, new event handler on update. I got this question a couple weeks ago, and I thought it'd be a good one uh, to get going again on my live stream. So let me, I'll go ahead and fork this because uh, I know I'm going to need to do so here anyway. But I've got um let's just get rid of this stuff that we don't need that doesn't need to be there and really this doesn't need to be there either uh, because we see what the the value is so here's the question um this person says hey it is it normal behavior for an effect with a custom event handler to attach and detach on every state change uh they made a code sandbox uh, that's the one we're looking at there and wondering if they're missing something so what's going on here is for some reason, uh, there, there are good reasons to do this, but for some reason this person wants to add a key up handler on the input. Now, before I get into anything, this would be way easier to just say on key up equals key uh, handle key up. And you don't have to do any of this nonsense. And in fact, you don't even need to do the React callback nonsense. It'd just be this thing, const handle key up. And then we can just get rid of that. And boom, now you've got exactly what you were looking for um, without you know adding the here. This should be handle key up, checked, checked. Uh, okay, yeah, interesting. Handle key up. That should be logging something on key up and oh right. Key. There we go. So on key up. Cool. So that works. That's great. Um, but there are situations where you do need to attach event listeners inside of an effect. Um, maybe you're integra integrating with a third party library or something like that. So there are circumstances where uh, using a use effect to actually add an event listener manually is uh, useful. And so that's what we're, um, I'm gonna show you what the problem is and how you can fix this problem. So let's get rid of that uh, key up nonsense here. We've got our, um, yeah, we've got our DOM. Um, okay, so what's going on here is we're adding a, a, a key up handler to the document, not to the input. So I guess that's going to be different. So backing up on what I said before, because the intent here is to add a key up listener to the document. Okay, so um, and if I just focus on this area and hit a key, then I should be getting those logs. Um, yeah, okay, so um, I might take a look at some um, some Q&A in the chat here after I'm done with this, but I don't typically just open it up for Q&A during these dev tips. They're normally pretty focused on stuff. Okay, so what, what's going on here is the use effect um, hook accepts a dependency array. And actually, if we just get rid of that for now, we're going to see the, the same... Uh, behavior as before. Well, oh, you know what? We need to. Oh, right. We we need to have a state change. Okay. So we uh, as we change the state, as we do key handlers, whatever, you're going to notice we, we get detached and attached. And so the use effect accepts a callback, which will be run after every single render. 
and that's why we're getting this attached here when we first uh, start. And then um, between renders, so at the um, before a component is unmounted or um, between a, an update, we're going to run the function that's returned from use effect, which is the cleanup function. So that's why we're getting the detached here. And so sometimes like the the nice thing about this is that this is never wrong we're adding an event listener removing it we, we are never adding more event listeners than we need to whatever like the application works but it's not optimal okay so um why is this happening well it's happening because we um we're literally updating the state this is triggering a re-render in this component and therefore we get this attached and detached so if we want to avoid uh, the cleanup running when uh, when we don't need to because we're just we're literally just adding a handle key up uh, or we're removing it and adding it again that's that's useless work so if you want to you can add a dependency array here but you'll notice that we get this uh, exhaustive depths warning from eslint and it's really really important to not ignore those warnings 99 percent of the time um, those warnings are telling you you've got a bug and you need to fix it so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, hey, I have a dependency on this handle key up function. And so therefore, uh, don't, I, I don't want you to uh, re-render or, or to recall my um, effect callback or call my cleanup unless the handle key up function changes. OK, and then if we do this, we'll notice that, that it's still getting detached and reattached on every single time. So the question is, is handle key up changing? Well, absolutely, it, it totally is. Otherwise, this wouldn't be happening. So handle key up is changing. So that's when we look up here at what uh, this person has in here. And they're using react.use callback. React.use callback here is, um, is basically like because all you're defining all of your functions inside the render method, the only way, uh, um, well, every single time the render happens, you're going to redefine that new function, okay? So like with, if we swap these implementations and go with this, then we'll get the same result, detach and reattach. So uh, why is this getting a yellow underline? Oh, yeah, because um, uh, the ESLint plugin sees this and it's like, oh, you're using this as a dependency that's basically like not using any dependencies at all, so you can remove that dependency list, or you need to uh, alternatively wrap this into a use callback hook, which is what they did here. Uh, okay, so that it will not work. Um, it's not gonna yield the results that we're looking for. So we use react.use callback, and react use callback accepts the callback, and uh, then as a second argument, it accepts all of the dependencies that this callback depends on. So this thing depends on the checked state, and if that checked state ever changes, then the closure that was created at the time this, this callback was created and the one we're returning was created um, is going to be stale. And so therefore React will say, oh, that checked value changed. Let me give you back the, the newest version of this callback so that you don't have stale values in here. And this is where the crux of the problem is. Because we're depending on the checked state, then um, every single time we render, because the check state changed, we're going to get a new callback and therefore the handle key up changed. So that's what's going on here. Um, here are a couple of solutions to this particular problem. The first thing I'd recommend is there's no reason to um, have this function outside of the use effect. So the first thing I'd say is let's just move this down right here. And then we don't need to have a handle key up dependency and boom, we're solid. We don't have that problem anymore of attaching and, re and attaching and whatever else. Um, that all just is working great. Um, so that is, uh, oh, you know what? <laughs> That's not gonna work because we have checked uh, is a dependency on this. So if you didn't have that situation, then this would be a good solution. Um, but because checked is actually, and this actually doing things this way reveals to you the dependencies that you actually do have in your use effect um, by moving all of your callbacks and stuff rather than spreading those dependencies out across all these callbacks. Uh, okay, so that didn't work. So what's another thing that we could do? Well, there are, um, it, I could advise you better if I understood exactly what the, the use case that you're trying to uh, produce or, or the thing that you're specifically trying to do here. Um, 
but if if this was like the entire use case for our app is we just want to have a key up event listener on our document and that event listener needs to have access to the current checked state then this is what we can do we can make a checked ref equals react.use ref we'll pass in checked that will initialize our checked ref and then we'll say react.use effect and say checked ref equals uh, or dot current equals checked and that's going to happen on every single re-render and then in here instead of accepting checked we're going to do checked ref dot current and then we no longer need checked in here okay and with that we solve the problem so um that's I mean, it's, it's kind of hard for me to advise you because I don't really know the specific use case that you're talking about, but hopefully this at least makes sense why this use callback wasn't really being effective because the thing that you wanted to preserve was you wanted to preserve this callbacks like identity between renders even when checked uh, changes. But if you do that, then the callback itself is going to have a stale version of checked. And if you didn't want to actually um, put things inside of your use effect for some reason, then you could do the same solution here with checkedref.current and then just remove checked here. Uh, and you're going to get the same, um, same experience with that too. So e either way, it's the, the ref is going to help you with that. Uh, oh, and then we'll do handle key up as a dependency here. Um, and that still solves the problem. Do, 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 do. So we're good. Um, so yeah, it all comes down to... Um, when things change, it, when things change, or, or so, when there are things in your dependency list that are being used inside of your callback um, or your use effect callback, um, and those things change, then we need to like either retrieve the new callback um, that has the a updated closure, an updated updated reference of all the variables it's using, or call our use effect because the side effect that it was synchronizing your and uh, the state of the world with the state of your app, uh, that that all was stale, so it's got to resynchronize everything. Um, yeah, I I'm not sure if that really explains it super well, but hopefully it's it's sort of helpful. Um, now I'm gonna check out some um, of the questions here in the chat, so feel free to to rattle off stuff and I'll um, wrap things up here in just a little bit. So, um, what's my opinion on exhaustive depths? Dan Ambermoff is advocating for including depths always. What if you want to run your effect once as part of a design? So, um, I hear this a lot and this is actually a really common pitfall that people run into is they just start thinking, I only want this to run once on the, you know, for this particular component. Like, the user goes to this page they only need to load the um, that information at the time that they um, at they render at the time that they mount this component, and then they never need to load the data again. And I've got to talk about this actually um, because it's a uh, yeah it's a pretty common um, pitfall, and it's called React hook, pick, hook pitfalls. You can click on this little TV emoji, and this will uh, actually there I am right there exhaustive depths. I'm telling you uh, don't ignore this. And I show you this little example um, where it uh, reveals a situation where if you ignore that rule, then you could have uh, some pretty hardcore bugs. So I am a strong proponent of always including your dependencies. And um, yeah, so definitely do it. Uh, Andrew is asking, hi, Kent. Any idea how to handle an, um, the, uh, an array of subscriptions with use effect? I had to create a component that uses a subscription and map. I'm not sure what you're asking about, Luca. So go ahead and go to my AMA and you can ask uh, ask something there, maybe with an example or something. And there's a link to that. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And here's a good solution. And I've got a YouTube also. Oh, no, not this one. YouTube. I think this is the one. Also, I live streamed this. And I want to be friendly, so I'll say hi. Uh, yeah. Okay, sweet. Goodbye. That was fun. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, I'm hoping... So, one of the reasons that I'm going to be doing this redesign of my office is to facilitate doing these live streams more often because I enjoy doing the live streams and uh, my remote workshops and all of that stuff. And so, yeah, I'm really hoping that um, with that, I can do this kind of thing more often. 
Um, I can't promise that I'm going to do this again tomorrow. I was mostly wanting to try out my new camera, which I think is kind of fun. Um, but uh, yeah, so hopefully by like next year, I'll start getting into live streaming a lot more frequently. Uh, and maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll do this tomorrow. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful, spectacular day, and I will see you all later. Bye. Thank you.